I'm Blake, professional innovator and designer in pursuit of the invisible smart home. Water leak alert. Today I'm going to talk about the Sonoff Matter Relay. And I'm going to show you how to make a smart lamp smarter. Typically in the smart home, you would add a smart plug or a smart uh, socket to uh, you know plug a lamp into to bring it into your smart home. But that's not a good idea because inherently somebody's just going to reach under and turn off this switch. And now the lamp is disconnected from the smart home. So you could add a button like I like to do. And then you educate your users, your children, your spouse, your guests, and so on to use this button. But it has delays and its own compromises. And inherently, somebody's still going to reach underneath and just turn off the lamp. So I'm going to show you how to install this uh, Matter Relay and integrate it with SmartThings so that you can, uh, the lamp will look just like it does without any smarts, but it'll still be integrated with the smart home. So a user that reaches underneath and turns it off will just be turning it off, but it'll still be connected to the smart home so you can control it with your phone or schedules or whatever. All right, so first you're gonna to need to select a lamp that's uh, compatible with this idea of a retrofit. It has to have a toggle on off uh, analog switch and it should be made of material when you once you get to the inside i think this is made out of wood or something that it'll still transmit the signal and you have to have access to the cable so i'm presuming i can take off this felt pad and replace it and get access to the two cables it's going to be four cables i need two from the uh, the cord which is coming in well, obviously that's going to be accessible and then two from the switch so hopefully those two from the switch come down here and then I can uh, connect it to the uh, Sonoff Matter Relay. All right, so note, I, uh, no, I don't have it plugged in while I'm doing these modifications. Um, I've managed to um, carefully open the bottom so I can close it again when I need to. And I've just given myself some wire here to play with. And on the top, I was hoping I could use this switch and just integrate it, but because of the way it's designed, um, I can't really get in there without damaging it and putting it back together. It's going to be unlikely. So I'm going to add my own switch. So I picked up some inexpensive switches. This is just a rotary on off. And I thought I would, I considered one of these, but I think in the end I'm going to go with the rotary. And I managed to find a uh, plastic bracket, you know, in my junk pile that's gonna fit. So I'm gonna use these two wires for the connection to the light bulb. I'm gonna leave this switch on and remove this dial. And then this is going to be, and I've added a wire to hook up to this switch. That's going to, so it's going to give me six wires in the bottom. And then this is going to go like that. And then you can reach under and turn the light off and on. So let me solder this up and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so I've got the switch wires soldered and fed through to the bottom. And I've taken off this rubber thing so that you're not tempted to use the old switch. And I've got the six wires exposed at the bottom. The two from the plug, that's the AC power. This is to the light bulb. And these two go to the uh, S1 and S2 on the Sonoff device. So it's, all six wires will be hooked up to here. I'll do that now. This is what it looks like with the uh, six wires hooked up to the relay. This is a Matter, Sonoff Matter Mini R4M. All right, so I plugged it in and I'm gonna do a quick test 
you have to make sure the original switch is on, which I think it is. And I would just test it by clicking the switch here. That turns it on, and I should be able to turn it off and off and on here. Great. All right, so let's tidy it up and put it back together. All right, so I've secured it in there. And I've paired it before. I paired it with my smart things before because, of course, you need access to the barcode that's on the bottom of that thing. And I'm going to lightly glue this cover back on. And I think we're set to go. And just one note before I finish here. These two wires that go to S1 and S2 on the switch, they don't carry any high voltage, very, very low current. So there's no really risk of uh, danger here. I mean, it's not a good idea, of course, if it was the high voltage wires to put it in a sharp edge like this. But uh, there's no worries there. So I paired it to SmartThings. It's a matter device. I had to use the QR code and it went smoothly. Um, and I found with recent uh, matter devices, they all are working pretty well. There's been a lot of complaints out there. Um, I think most of the problem is, is when you're trying to pair it with multiple uh, platforms. Um, I don't really think that's necessary. You should just pick a platform that's in charge, SmartThings, Habitat or so you know or similar um, but you probably shouldn't use a uh, you know a smart speaker as in google or amazon as your your platform of choice it's okay to connect to those devices maybe for um, for sound alerts or voice alerts or for voice control but otherwise you should have a dedicated hub that's in charge so i connected it to smart things and this is what it looks like in smart things when you uh, turn the light off with your hand it changes the status in smart things or of course you can use smart things itself to turn it off and on or set schedules and so on or have it triggered with other automation with a motion sensor or something all right so now you have a lamp connected to your smart home that you can use for schedules or security or even notifications i like to have specific lights uh, blink when there's you know someone at the door on the porch or so on and when somebody reaches under to turn it off, it's still connected to the smart home. You can still turn it off and on with your phone and the schedules and so on. So that's the invisible smart home. That light works for everybody in the home, not just the DIY enthusiast. All right, so using a low cost relay smart relay of some sort or the other matter z-wave zigbee or otherwise and maybe a dollar and change and a switch and some cable and a little bit of soldering uh, you have yourself a smart lamp that works for everybody and that's cool please uh, like and subscribe and look for my next video cheers